Good day again, grade 11s. So for the last section of the week, we'll look at total surface area. And this is covered on page 116 to page 118 in your answer series textbooks. Right, so total surface area is the total exterior area of all the exposed surfaces of a 3D object. Now the units, again, as in the previous presentation, the units for area will be given in units squared. So that's millimeter squared, centimeter squared, meter squared, etc. But um, just take note, the only difference between total surface area and um, area is that total surface area refers to the area of 3D objects, whilst area refers to 2D objects, as explained in the previous presentation. Okay, so how do we calculate the total surface area of a rectangular prism? So we will see that um, a prism or any 3D figure in fact has some sort of length, breadth and a height. Now if you were to imagine um, what the other side looks like, it would look something like that. So just imagine a cube or some rectangular 3D object, um, just to a way to help us explain the, the formula over here. Right, so when I calculate the total surface area of this rectangular prism, I will start by multiplying two with the length and the breadth. So two times length times breadth. Now, why am I multiplying by two? Because length times breadth is the formula for the area of a, a, a rectangle or square. However, we multiply this by two because this area is on either side of this prism. And then we add two times length times height, which is referring to those two sides. Because there are two sides on either side of this prism, we need to add the area of both of those rectangles. And then, of course, two times breadth times height, which is referring to the other two sides, which are on either side of this prism. So, in fact, there are six shapes. If you add up all, all the, the twos in that formula, you'll see that there are six rectangles or squares that we need to add together, or the area of those squares that we need to add together to get the final answer. So I hope this um, explains why we multiply with 2 throughout this formula. So at the end, we'll have an answer that is inclusive of all six of those sides of the prism. For example, we will just substitute the values of the length and the breadth and the height into the formula over here. So here we can take the length as 12 meters and the breadth as 7 meters and the height as two meters, all the units are in the same unit, so therefore we can continue by substituting them into the formula. You can start with two times 12 times seven, which is two times length times breadth, and then we can add plus two times 12 times two, and then plus two times seven times two. Right, and then you'll get a final answer of 244 meters squared. If you can calculate those values separately, if you would like, you can also, with the use of your brackets on your calculator, you can type this all in one go and get your final answer immediately, 244 meters squared. Right, let's look at the calculation of the surface area of a cylinder. So, in a cylinder, you'll see that there are two circles, in fact. So there are two circles or two surface areas of a circle that we need to include in our calculation. And then also the area of the shape of the cylinder, the height, which will include the calculation with the height and the circumference of the circle. So here is the formula. <clears throat> it might look very intense, and just to follow me. So 
So you'll see on the cylinder, I've highlighted those circles or the area of the circle in purple, and that's represented by the first part of the formula. So here it says that we have to take two times pi times radius squared. Do you remember in the previous presentation that, that how to calculate the area of a, of a circle, we take pi times radius squared. But now this time they've added uh, times two. And why is that? Because there are two, two um, circles or two areas of a circle on either side of the cylinder that needs to be included in the total surface area. And then they say, we will add two times pi times radius times the height. And if you remember from the presentation in the, in the beginning of the week or on Tuesday, we were talking about um, circumference. So you'll see in that part in the formula, which is in orange, two times pi times the radius is the formula for the circumference of a circle. And all we need to do is simply multiply that with the height, and that will give us the total surface area of, of the rest of the cylinder. So we simply add these two values together. So in an example, we are given a radius of three and a half millimeters and the height as 20 millimeters. All we do is substitute that into the formula. Again, these the, the formulas will be given to you in tests and exams. Okay, so the first part of that formula is two times three comma one four two times three comma five squared, which is the radius, and then we add two times three comma one four two times three and a half times twenty. Oh, that's a mouthful. All you need to do is just follow um, the method of substitution. You can get the two answers separately on your calculator, or you can type in this whole formula in, into your calculator and you'll get the final answer of 516,86 millimeters squared. And remember to only round off at the end. Again, we must check that all the measurements are in the same units before we calculate our final answers. Otherwise, first convert all the units into those specified by the question. If the question wants centimeters squared, like in this example, you will convert all the, um, the units on the cylinder, in this case, to centimeters. So you'll see that the radius is given as two millimeters, and we want to find the final answer in centimeters squared, so we can simply convert that two millimeters to centimeters by dividing it by 10, because I'm going from a smaller unit to a bigger unit. So I divide by 10 because there's 10 millimeters in a centimeter. So once your units are converted as specified by a question, then we can calculate the total surface area. And as just previously discussed, we calculate the total surface area of a cylinder by taking two times pi times radius squared plus two times pi times the radius times the height. So we need to substitute those values into the formula. And in this example, the final answer is given as 6,54 centimeters squared, as they specified in the question. Um, once more, round off your final answers to two decimal places, unless otherwise stated. And again, in the case of calculating costs, um, we might have to round our answers up if they don't specify that the that the that measurements or, or were cut or that fabric or something like that was cut exactly. Take a look at the worked examples on page 117 and 118 in your textbooks. So you'll see they've given us a figure, which is again a complex shape. And I've just added some dimensions at the back. So it makes this figure look transparent so that you have a better idea of what this would look like um, in 3D. So we need to calculate the total surface area of this shape. And 
Uh, many of you might get the answer in various ways by breaking up the shape into many different rectangles and adding the answers up together at the end. However, in the textbook, they have broken down this figure into three different areas or three different rectangular prisms. So let's take a look at what they've done. So here I'll demarcate the first prism there. And to get the total surface area of this prism, again, we take two times length times breadth plus two times breadth times height plus two times length times height. And uh, they've given this as two times nine times five plus two times five times four plus two times nine times four, which gives us the total surface area of this prism if we included all of the sides of this prism in, our, in, the, in the calculation. Um, however, at the end, you'll see that a certain part of the prisms will need to be left out because those surfaces are unexposed. In the next section, they calculate the total surface area of a second prism, and that's by using the dimensions of 15 centimeters, 4 centimeters, and 3 centimeters. So again, calculating the total surface area, 2 times 15 times 4, plus 2 times 15 times 3, plus 2 times 4 times 3, equals 234 centimeters squared. In the last section, they calculated the prism again by using the same formula, just different dimensions of six centimeters, four centimeters, and five centimeters. Now the final answer there is 148 centimeters squared. However, when we take a look at the total surface area of this whole figure, we calculated the surface of areas that shouldn't be included in the calculation because those are areas that are unexposed. So they explain here that the bottom area of the prism one is not exposed and nor the bottom of area three as I demarcated there on the, on the figure. So therefore the unexposed surfaces is equal to 4 times 5 plus 4 times 5, and that's 20 plus 20, and that gives us 40 centimeters squared. So these two unexposed surfaces were calculated when calculating the areas of the first and the third prism, but they were also calculated when we calculated the area of the second prism over there. So therefore, the unexposed surfaces were calculated twice. So there is 80 centimeters squared that we've calculated um, too much, if you, if you want to take it like that. This, when we add the areas together, we will have to deduct the total unexposed surfaces because the definition of total surface area only includes those areas of a 3D figure that are exposed. So the total surface area of this figure is 202 plus 234 plus 148 minus 80 centimeters squared and that gives us 504 centimeters squared. We cannot include the area of the unexposed surfaces. Um, you might get to the same answer when you break this up into many different rectangles. It might just take you a little bit longer. Now, when we take a look at question two, in Durham-Clough High School, they hire a painter from the local community to paint a metal water tank at the school with rust-proof paint. So a picture of the water tank is given below. And the painter is only going to paint the outside of the water tank. So assuming that the tank has a lid and the painter will also want the underside um, of the tank painted, uh, determine the surface area of metal to be painted. So in this example, they give us a cylinder and we need to calculate the surface area of a cylinder. So they've given us a diameter of two meters. And remember in the calculation, we will make use of a radius. So remember to first convert your diameter to 
into a radius. And we do that by taking the diameter divided by two. And that gives us a radius of one meter. So to get the total surface area of this water tank, we will take two times 3,142 times one squared, which is just one plus two times 3,142 times one times 1,5, which is the height of the water tank. And you'll see the answer is 15,71 meters squared. Okay, so that was total or calculating total surface area. Uh, your homework for today is exercise three. It's on page 118 in your textbooks. Um, you can pause the video now if you would like to complete it from the video. Just um, before we go on, this question one, you'll see it's another complex shape. However, it's two basic shapes given. There's a cylinder and a rectangular prism. And the cylinder is on top of this rectangular prism. So the bottom of the cylinder will have to be excluded at the end of your calculations. Um, if you calculate the total surface area of the cylinder, and the total surface area of the prism, remember that you would be calculating the bottom part of that cylinder twice, which is unexposed, and you'll have to exclude that from your calculation, just to give you a tip. And two, to give you a dimension of a tin um, for butternut soup, and also the packaging arrangement at the bottom there. You can pause the video now if you'd like to finish question two. And as soon as you finish this exercise, you'll find the memo on page A24 and A25. Right, so if you have any questions, just feel free to let us know on our WhatsApp groups. And that is the work for the week. Um, I hope you enjoy the rest of your week and your weekend. And we'll see you for the next presentation on calculating volume. All right, thanks for 11th. Goodbye.